Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am 12 Kyle. Check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I'm going to talk about is no competition. Um, I was listening earlier to uh, Eric B. and Rakim and, you know, hearing Rakim say, because I'm number one, competition is none. I measure with the heat that's made by sun. Um, That line stuck out to me. And I talked about on my blog uh, many years ago about competition. And, um, you know, I, I just, uh, it made me reminisce back to that blog post and it made me think about, um, you know, just being competitive and who you're actually in competition with. And, you know, much to his credit, Rakim talks about just, I'm not in competition with anybody. And it made me think back to, um, you know, when I was younger, uh, I was in competition with my friends a lot. Um, and, but it was a friendly competition. Like we would, I remember even being like in middle school, particularly when I got to middle school, uh, middle school and high school, definitely. Um, you know, we would compete, uh, at just about everything. Um, we competed when it came to sports, uh, cause nobody wants to lose. Right. And, and you know, worst thing you want to do is lose to your buddy. Um, we would compete when it came to grades. Um, my friends, we, we were a little different. We would cut a little different because we really did compete, especially when we had classes together. We would really complete compete when it came to our schoolwork. So like if this one got an A, you know, on a test, then it's my turn. I got to try to get an A2. And if he got an A and I got a B, then he hold that over my head. And it was it was real good, friendly competition. And I really enjoyed that competitiveness. Um, and a lot of that, you know, kind of trickled over to high school as well. Um, but we we pushed each other. We competed. <laughs> we competed uh, when it came to uh, girls. We did that too. Um <laughs> <laughs> that was fun too because you know we competed as far as the sea much like um how can i explain it you ever seen the movie the wood kind of like that not competing for you know see who could sleep with somebody anything like that but just you know competition man just competition was always something big for us um so yeah i just it, it was like you know that made me think about like i said the level of competition that i have with my friends and you know, as you go through life, you realize that more and more the competition that's ne- isn't necessarily your friends or anyone around you. You know, the competition is, you know, yourself. The competition really is in the mirror. Um, but I, I enjoy those days of, you know, compete with my friends. Um, but, you know, nowadays, you know, the competition isn't the same. I, I mean, like I really don't. I don't compete as far as most things I, I guess that I probably would have competed for back then. Um, you know, now like I'll use this podcast for instance. Um, I say this in sincerity. I say this with all modesty. Uh, I say this with humbleness. There is no competition in my mind to this podcast, period. I have peers. I have friends. I have associates. But there's no competition to this podcast. And every time that you hear an episode, I'm trying to make this podcast better than the last episode. Uh, I will tell you that I have not made a perfect episode yet. Um, there's subtle mistakes, 
Uh, and then subtle mistakes that I try to work on I, or when I listen back to them, I'm like, damn, I should have said this. I could have done this like that. I could have edited this mute, the sound in here um, that could have been taken out. But I don't change anything. What you if, if even if I recorded live, what you what you hear is what you get. Like there's no tinkering. I don't go back and change this or change that. The only thing that you hear is the sound of my voice and music in the background. That's it. And if you're watching on YouTube, which is for this time, we have an actual video. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, there is no music. So you're just listening to me. So whatever you, what you see is what you get. <laughs> so, um, but nah, it, it's, uh, there, there's no, there's no competition for this podcast. And, and the reason being is because the reason why I say that is because like, I genuinely feel like this is a great podcast because one, because it's mine. It's authentically me. Um, but no, I'm not in competition with Joe Buttons. I'm not in competition with the Reed. I'm not in competition with uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I'm not in competition with my bo- with my boys like Frocast, Eclectic, um, you know, Too Much Game, Uncle Dolomite. I'm not Rodis. I'm not in competition with anybody. I think that they are all great podcasts. Autumn to Aries, J Book, everybody, D Murph, all of these people, Baylor, all the people that you see me on social media retweeting their uh, podcast because I listen to their podcast because I'm fans of their podcast, but I'm not in competition with them. And there's a difference, I think. Um, but I think it's uh, in a way I'm I'm pushed, I'm pushed constantly by good or great content that i hear so when i hear quest love supreme when i hear a dope episode that makes me want to go and record a dope episode myself when i hear eclectic do one or i hear uh king germ do one i want to do the same thing in my own lane i don't but again i don't feel like i'm in any competition it's kind of like that um remember uh, a couple of years ago when kendrick uh, lamar dropped that control verse uh, that song for that song control that he was on. Uh, what song was he on? Um, I can't remember. Big Sean, Big Sean, he was on Big Sean's song control and he dropped the verse and people went crazy. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not in any competition, but listening to others that does push me and that does fuel me along with the fire that's inside me. Um, and at this stage of my life, I'll be honest, like there's no competition as far as material things either. You know, a lot of times people see what you're doing and they see um, what they think is a level of success uh, based on material things that if you have a house, you got a car and you got a white picket fence and you got a dog and you got a cat. <laughs> they think that you so-called made it in life. And I guess by. I don't know by the world standards. I guess you could say I made it, but I don't look at it like that. I feel like it's still a lot of stuff that I have to do. And it's not even as far as material stuff. Cause again, when it's, when I leave here, I can't take it with. Me. So psh, I'll leave it for my kids. But, um, but nah, it's, it's, um, uh, I don't, I don't see it like that. I don't, I don't think that I'm in competition to, uh, get material things or what have you. Now I will say this much living where I live in the city of Atlanta and I've lived here for 25 years at the time of this recording, uh, especially over the years, Atlanta's become a very superficial type place. So, you know, a lot of stuff can be based on where you live and what you have and you know, what schools your kids go to and all that. I, I don't get caught up in all that stuff. And I don't get caught up in where people work. I don't get caught up in what people do for a living. I could care less because you know what? If you made a million dollars, I can't spend it. So what? If I made a million, you couldn't spend mine either. I don't make a million though. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, but um, nah, it, it's uh, I'm I'm not in any competition. But I think I think friendly competition is good. I think it is, but um. I'm not in any competition and I, I I don't compete for, you know, material things for one. Again, you can't take that stuff with you. But for two, I learned a long time ago, like 
you don't know how people get what they got. And you don't know what they did to get it. I'll never forget. I was working. Um, I must. This must have been. Two thousand. Maybe that's like ninety nine. Maybe not yet. Yeah, probably like ninety nine. Um, I was working for this finance company. And um, this guy came in and it's like I was working this little finance company and I was a loan officer. And um, the guy, he. I remember it because I was sitting at my desk and I could see him like pull up. He pulls up in this big white, big body bins, you know, with the rims shining and everything. And I'm like, okay, white dude jumps out. He all fresh and clean. And he's comes inside and he's like, yeah, you know, I want to borrow. He says something like he needed to borrow like four grand or something. And basically he had his, his paperwork with him and with his, with his paperwork, his paperwork basically said like, Within 90 days, he would be getting some type of his grandmother died or something like that. His inheritance would be like his portion of his inheritance would be like six hundred thousand dollars. And so he wanted to get basically a loan to kind of tie him over until he got the inheritance. And he was actually at if it was 90 days, like he needed like he wanted to get the money. And then within a week's time, he'd have the check for the uh, inheritance. And, you know, of course, you know, loan place, they got to pull your credit and all this stuff like that. Where's credit? He didn't qualify. And he was mad because he was like, yo, I can't believe he's like, man, I can't believe y'all won't give me four grand. I got the paperwork showing right here that I could pay you back. I'll have this loan paid back in a, in a week, in less than a week. It's like, I'm going to get my check on Friday. And, you know, it's like, this is not what they could do. I mean, like he didn't qualify because his credit score, like, his credit score was like, in the low 500s or something like that. It was something crazy. But anyway, what I learned from that was from afar, he looked like somebody who had everything, quote unquote, that society says you should have. He's He had a nice, he had a decent job. He had a nice car. He probably had a nice house. Um, He had money, you know, he just needed a quick four grand and he couldn't get the four grand and he was mad. And, you know, that just that situation just kind of taught me like you just again, you don't know what people do. You don't know what people did to get where they are. You don't know what they did to get what they got. So never be envious of somebody or what they got, because, again, you're not in any competition with anybody because what they have you can't have you can get something similar you know like i i can't get you know five teslas like eclectic because <laughs> you can only drive one he's got five i don't know why he needs five but hey that's you know, that's my boy that's that's me that's that's his thing right but i said that to say this like you just you just don't know um I think men, or at least men of my era and age, I think I th I think some of us have outgrown that. Now there's some that you know they see Johnny on the block and they want to look just like him, or they see the videos, Instagram, and they see you in Tulum turning up, they see you in you know L.A. doing this, or you see you in New York or wh wherever. Houston balling out or even in Atlanta they see you on Instagram they see the highlights the stories and I always said this you have to use social media for what it is and view it for what it is social media is the highlights everybody wants to see the highlights <laughs> everybody wants to see the scoring touchdown they don't want to see that interception that you threw they don't want to see that fumble that you had last week and so social media accentuates the highlights it doesn't accentuate the neck because you know the the day that you lost your job you didn't post that on instagram <laughs> the day that you got downsized that was not posted on instagram or twitter i can promise you that and so you have to be careful about you know what you find as motivation but again you're not in any competition with anybody and you know i i think one of the things that I see a lot 
and it's something that's really not said a lot verbalized but it's um it's something that i it's game that i peep and it's mostly women at least the women that i know i can't say all women i don't want to generalize but yeah man it's like women at least the women that i know um they seem to be in constant competition with each other you know for no real reason <laughs> i mean like you can be in you can be in the doctor's office right i'll just say the doctors or the dentist's office you can be in the doctor's office and sitting there minding your own business a woman will walk in right Take a look around at the women in the room and watch how they look at that woman that just walked in the room. It is amazing. Some, not all, some will look her up and down and in within five seconds, they can determine how much money she has or doesn't have what she said, which how she feels about herself. When she opens her mouth, they can kind of tell her her level of education, so forth and so on. And you know, a lot of times they, they, at least they appear to feel like they're in competition. And I'm like, boo, you're not in competition. They ain't even in your league, to be honest. And the men that you want, they don't want. And the men that they want, you don't want. <laughs> now, I know, I mean, I sit in a place where I'm somebody who's taken, so I'm off the market. And I know that, yeah, there's way more men, excuse me, there's way more women than there are men. I get it. But at the same time, you know, are you in competition though? Are you in competition for those men? Mm, not really. Not if you think about it. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I've learned, particularly from social media, is the one thing that we're all in competition for is attention. I would be very cautious about being in competition for attention because at some point you will do, if you're in competition with people for attention, I think at some point you will do something that you wouldn't normally do for attention. Case in point, if you're on Instagram and you put up a post and you get a hundred likes. Okay, cool. But then your friend puts up a post and she, instead of her just being in her, uh, you know, formal dress, she's in a bathing suit. She gets a thousand likes. Now you say with your hundred likes, you're like, well, wait a minute. The only difference between my picture and her picture is that I got on clothes and she don't. And that may not necessarily be in your character to be posting pictures for strangers attention, not the people that you know and like, because again, I said Instagram This is Instagram. So anybody, you, your page is open. Anybody can see it. Right. And the algorithms get tricked because the more and more attention that's flowing to that. Next thing you know, you start appearing in people's um, algorithms, right? So after a while, 1,000 likes ain't enough. And after a while, 100 followers ain't enough. And then it's like, okay, I got to take it to the next level. I got to get 10,000 followers. And then I hit 10,000 likes. Then I got to get 20,000 followers and so forth and so on. And, and I mean, it's just, Ultimately, I think what will end up happening is you may end up doing something for the attention. And I can't remember what song that was. And I know I'm going to think of it after I stop recording. Um, where they said attention is the drug that she craves the most. And I was like, yo, that's a bar. Um, 
and I and, and it just it does not just I don't want to make it sound like I'm just singling out women because men do the same thing, um, particularly on social media. You know, I've seen guys, you know, put up posts, and the next thing you know, it, it's it's okay. Well, let me let me do this. Let me get more likes. Let me get more laughs. Let me get more jokes. And, you know, it started off on Twitter, then it moved to, you know, Instagram, and now it's TikTok. And again, if that's what you do to get money, I get it. But just be careful. Because at some point, some people are willing to go far and beyond to sell their souls. And we see it every day. I'm not someone who watches a lot of TV, right? Uh, I don't watch any reality TV. But you can turn on Housewives, Love and Hip Hop, all of these shows. And I just know of them. I don't watch them. And, you know, there's going to come a point in time where these people who participate on these shows, they're going to get old. And they, if they don't have kids, they'll probably have kids, grandkids. And they're going to look back and they'll be like, why did I? <laughs> why was I on TV acting a fool like that? Was it really worth that check? And I know, I mean, like, hey, if you go on Love and Hip Hop and you can get a million dollars for acting a fool, I mean, I don't have a million dollars. But I. For me, it's just not worth it. That's just me. I can't speak for anybody else, right? I'm not mad at you. Get your money. But, 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 at some point, how far will you go? Because in all actuality, there has to be some type of line of demarcation. But when you feel like you're in competition with people, you know, you got to take it there. I, I'll never forget. Um, <laughs> this was years ago. Um, I was at this club. Where was that club? There's some club downtown in Atlanta. It might, no, it might have been Midtown. We was in Midtown. And um, club's no longer here. And there was a, this was, man, this had to be at least 15, maybe 20 years ago, maybe. Yeah, probably about 20 years ago, there was a twerk contest. And I don't even know if it was called twerking. It, it might have been called shake your booty contest. <laughs> so, so it was a shake, shake your booty contest. And you got these girls up there, you know, shaking the booty. Now, keep in mind, at this particular time, there's no B, there's no such thing as BBLs. If you, if you got some, if you packing something back there, it's yours. It ain't something that somebody gave you, right? And so this one chick, she got up there. She was, you know, they they put on Luke and she was just popping the thing. And it was just, and fellas going crazy, right? And then another chick got up there and she did it too. And so fellas going crazy. So it was, so the winner was going to be based on whoever made, whoever got the most noise. And I think like the grand prize was like $500, right? So it was a tie. And... So the judges was like, all right, I'm going to let y'all freestyle. Y'all do whatever y'all want to do, however you want to do it. But, you know, whoever get the loudest noise between these two right here, they'll be the winners. And so I'm standing there like, okay, now you just got, you you just went, you were, it was like, and I think it was like maybe 10, 10 ladies to start it off. So you went from 10 all the way down to two, right? So <laughs> competition. Sometimes brings out the best, sometimes brings out the worst. So first chick, she went off to the side and she kind of got a game plan going. So they put the Luke on and she was like, I'm going for it. So she pulls her pants down, nothing but panties. And she's twerking. So now, because now, keep in mind, everybody had their clothes on all up until this point. So the fellas, we saw they're just going crazy every week. We just barking and all kind of stuff. I mean, like it was. <laughs> I, I don't even know why I was at this point, but this is so funny. 
Um, and this was like intermission of a club. I don't know. I, again, I'm trying to, I cannot remember well, where I was beside the point. But anyway, so because she showed her panties, the fellas went crazy. So I'm like, okay, she going, she's definitely going to win. So the next chick comes up and she stood there. They put the Luke on and she was standing there. She didn't look like she didn't know what she was going to do. Man, she took off her pants and her panties and just started twerking right there. Man, dudes fell out on the floor, was rolling on the floor and everything. The the host, he fell on the floor. He was rolling. And she only did it for like maybe 10 seconds, but that was enough. She got the she got the applause because the spirit of competition got her to the point where she was like, I'm going to do this for five hundred dollars. I'm going to take it there. The level of competition. I'm going to push this envelope all the way and embarrass and degrade myself in front of this room of, you know, yelling men for five hundred dollars. And she won. Of course, she got the most yells, you know, dudes in there going crazy. I was in disbelief <laughs> because I didn't think it would come to that. But I said all that to say this, like, again, when you're in competition, you know, you never know how far you might go. But pushing yourself and going that far to the limit, sometimes it's just not worth it. And I think there are a lot of people these days who are selling their souls and one day, they, one day they're going to wake up and be like, it wasn't worth it. Don't let that be you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Thursday at midnight. Again, that's going to do it for me. My name is 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. Five G's.